Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Forte. Today what we're going to talk about is two hormones that when they're imbalanced, it affects your ability to burn fat as well as store fat. Now, I know most people, they prefer the first part, which is burning fat. So we have to understand the balance between these two hormones if you really want to optimize your fat burning potential. So we have two hormones that are produced in the pancreas, okay? We have insulin and we have glucagon. The insulin, okay? The insulin is a fat storing hormone. Insulin is increased in the body when you have too many carbohydrates. In fact, it's, it's increased when you have any carbohydrates, but in particular, the refined sugary carbohydrates, your breads, pastas, grains, um, bagels, crackers, um, the higher refined processed foods, okay? And so that's gonna give us a huge carb load and it's gonna increase our insulin. Now there's another type of carbohydrate. It'll also increase insulin, but we still need it. And this is our green leafy vegetables and our non-starchy vegetables, okay? Doesn't increase insulin nearly as much because there's not as many carbohydrates. Um, now people will ask me, well, can I have carbohydrates in, in moderation? Well, no, you can't. Um, the reality is, is when you, as you age, our metabolism slows down. It's, it's, it's just a matter of fact, right? So when you were 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, you could have had a bunch of high refined carbohydrates and you didn't see a change in your body weight and, and you were still thin and, and, and everything burned off really fast. But now, now that you're above 40, things are slowing down, things are changing. So we have to be much more conscious of our metabolism and what things we're putting into it and making sure the hormones are all connecting together. So stress will also increase your insulin levels. So when you're stressed out, the body has this fight or flight response, right? And I call it a primitive response, but it's actually like an emergency response for the body because it responds when you uh, have perceived danger. The problem is today is that we don't, we don't, we are not in the same danger that people were 500, you know, 200, 300, 400 years ago. Um, we just don't have to hunt. We don't have to do those things. We, the stresses that we have today, we're sitting in a chair and we never can get to release those stresses by going out and hunting and doing farm work and gathering and, and doing those things. So stress is much greater today than it ever was in the past because we're never releasing the stress that's in our bodies, okay? And so cortisol, cortisol is secreted by the adrenal glands. And cortisol will increase the sugar in the body, which increases insulin and fat storing hormones. And so what's interesting here though is insulin is also given to people who are diabetics. And so if insulin is a fat storage hormone, okay, Yes, it will absolutely make your blood sugar decrease, but over time, insulin will cause an increase in inflammation in the body. And I actually have never seen a diabetic on insulin long-term that hasn't gotten worse and progressed because their entire metabolism gets thrown off and they begin to gain weight and have fat storage. This exact thing happened to my grandfather who was on, uh, who was on insulin and had dramatic fat storage, but he also had a high carb intake as well. So he didn't bring those down to the level. So what level should we eat um, as far as carbohydrates? Well, um, some people say, well, if I eat in moderation, am I okay? No, you're not okay. So if your metabolism is down, we want insulin down as well to boost that metabolism up. So any type of carbohydrate is gonna cause that insulin to go up. Now, your green leafy vegetables aren't gonna cause it to go up as much, but definitely anything that's refined. So we like to teach for our patients the ketogenic diet because the ketogenic diet keeps the carbohydrates down to about five to maybe 10% of the caloric intake. And if you watch one of our other videos, you would understand that every calorie is not the same and how the body reacts to it. The next hormone is glucagon. Now glucagon is stimulated by a higher protein intake. So ketogenic diet, 
doesn't have a high protein intake, okay? It's got about 35% protein intake, but it's a high enough to get the glucagon up in the body. Now, if you think of a high protein diet, you think of ideal protein, which there's some flaws to that, um, or an Atkins diet, okay, which there's also some flaws to that because they say cut out all carbohydrates, even some of the vegetables and stuff. And so I believe the newer uh, Atkins model is eating more of the vegetables because vegetables give us the nutrients and the macronutrients and the cofactors that help the proteins and the fat rebuild tissue. So that's very important. Um, the glucagon goes up with protein, but it also goes up with uh, exercise, okay? They call it HIT training, high intensity training. And so this is a fat burning hormone and exercise increases that hormone. Now, let me describe the type of exercise that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about going out for a walk for 15 or 20 minutes. I'm not talking about having an exhaustive workout for an hour, hour and a half. But you do want to have an exhaustive workout for about 20 to 30 minutes. You should be breathing heavy by the end. You should be sweating. You should feel like after you worked out, I had a really good workout, man. I really felt my body working, okay? That's what you need to be feeling with, with this type of workout to get this glucagon to go up. Now, what's also important is that, is that um, your growth hormone, your testosterone, and some of the other fat-burning hormones also go up as well when you do this high-intensity high intensity exercise. So hopefully that explained it a little bit better and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.